All right, guys, so it was definitely a pretty awful night last night on the farm. We've been dealing with one of our Nubian goats, Maple. Um, last week, she got what's called ruminal acidosis. She ate a little bit too much grain, or she could have got some green leaves, or there's no telling. Anything that upsets the pH inside of the rumen can lead to ruminal acidosis. That in turn is diarrhea, they go off feed, they stop eating, they stop drinking, they become dehydrated, and it causes a lot of issues for them. With her case, it turned into what's called goat polio, and that's where thiamine is not being provided by the bacteria breaking down food in the rumen, and in turn, the body is unable to digest sugars and feed the brain sugar. So it kind of sends the goat into a paralyzed state. It's, it's just a pretty awful thing. So we've been treating that for the polio for about 24 hours now and we lost her this morning unfortunately so we are going to um, go on to the next step and I think that it's always important for anybody that has more than one species of livestock if you lose one even if you know why you lost that one you should still get a necropsy done and the reason I say that is because there may be something else that was going on with that goat that we may not know about um, that through having a necropsy done, we could learn more about our own herd health. So in her case, I'm going to have her liver tested for copper levels. I wanna see if the copper is sufficient in the minerals that we're using, and I wanna see what other information we can have. Here in Elgin in the South Carolina area, we are lucky enough to have Clemson Livestock and Poultry Health Services. You can look it up online through the Veterinary Diagnostic Center. They are a wealth of knowledge when it comes to this type of thing. It's $90 for livestock to get a necropsy done, and you'll have veterinary pathologists look at your animal, and they'll give you a full report in a couple days, letting you know what caused the death, everything, every bit of information you can get. So awful, awful day. Um, so we are gonna definitely go ahead and get her loaded up in the back of the truck and get her there. I'm gonna fill out this paperwork real quick so that I have it on hand. I got it off their website. And we'll put a link to their site below. We're gonna do that, get her up there to the laboratory, and then the end of this video will be us reading and looking over the necropsy report for her. Thank you guys, like I said, it's been a hard day, but we're gonna get her loaded up. And um, yeah, we'll see y'all on the way to the laboratory. saying we uh, got our check ready and we filled out the paperwork and we're on the way to the diagnostics laboratory with maple with herd animals a flock a farm of any type I highly encourage you to get it done most all county extensions will do these for you they do it to keep animals safe in the area and to monitor any diseases that are going on so again this is through Clemson University that we're going to but it's just our local extension office so definitely encourage you to seek out one of those if you have goats or any type of livestock one thing that's kind of morbid that I do want to touch on really quick they're open every day except Sunday so let's say that you had an animal that passed away on a Saturday you would want to try and keep that animal as cool as possible. I've never had that happen, but if we did, the best way to do it is to put the animal inside of a large plastic cooler or bag or something like that and pack ice around that animal. The less cell damage there is, the better for what they're gonna be able to tell you from the results of that necropsy. And try and get it to the laboratory as quickly as possible after it passes away. It's not a happy time for a lot of people. We've had goats for seven years. This is our third adult goat that we've lost. The first one we took to the laboratory, I had no idea why she died. She was healthy as a horse the day before. Took her to the laboratory and they found that her lungs were full of grain. She inhaled her food, literally, and that's what killed her. The second goat, I had had him for 10 days, and we had just picked him up from another farm, and 
the vet had been doing everything she could for him. We couldn't figure out what was wrong with him, and he passed away. And this was after about five days of treatment, and it turned out he had urinary calculi. Now, this girl, I'm almost positive what was wrong with her. I think it was ruminal acidosis that led to polio. So after about five days of being in the ICU, she passed away. So we're getting her up here, and yeah. That's it. So we spared you guys the gore of having to offload an animal that we all love at Clemson. And I just want to send a shout out to that place. 100% professional, 100% on top of it. I'm doing an additional test on top of the necropsy to test for trace minerals in Maple's liver just to let us know how the minerals are doing in our goat herd. Somebody goes out and unloads the animal from the back of your vehicle and takes it inside. There's a receptionist at the front when you walk in. I don't think that you can videotape in there. I didn't feel comfortable doing it anyway, so we didn't video. The receptionist walks you through the paperwork, and then the doctor comes out, the veterinarian comes out, and you talk with the veterinarian about everything that happened, any treatment that you may have given, all of that. But yeah, just wanted to update you guys. Everything on the farm is not always fun. It still is a bad day, something bad nobody wants to go through, but try and take the good from it and definitely locate your county extension before it happens so that if you ever do lose a goat, you know where you can take it. To get it done by a vet's office is gonna be anywhere from $500 to $1,000 sometimes. So go ahead and locate these guys before something bad happens. So but thank you guys, and when we come back to you, we will have the results. Alright guys, so we finally got the necropsy results back. We actually got them back last week, but I hadn't had a whole lot of time to finish the video. And I just wanted to let everybody know kind of what happened here and what you can expect if you ever have a necropsy done on an animal. We got a lot of really good information. Definitely led to a lot of further discussion with our veterinarian regarding what could be done to prevent this in the future and what happened. Essentially what was found was they took samples out of maple, out of the inside of her body. I had thought initially that it was polio and ruminal acidosis. So they checked for both those things and that's just going by what you're seeing on the outside, but they're able to look on the inside of the goat. So they actually examined the brain with a light, made sure that it wasn't polio. And then they checked the pH of the stomach, the rumen, and they made sure it wasn't acidic. So we found it wasn't polio, it wasn't ruminal acidosis. And in this case, the most extravagant finding after talking to our vet and she kind of broke down the big words to us. And I'm looking at my cell phone here. I'm looking at the results here, guys. So in her brain, they found E. coli had actually gotten into her brain. And that's actually how E. coli kills people, animals. That's, that's what happens. It enters the bloodstream stream through the intestines and then it gets into the bloodstream and then goes to the brain and once it gets to the brain it kind of causes those neurologic things that we were seeing with maple that made me think that it was something that was related to polio and the way that we think that that entered the intestines was because of clostridium now clostridium as most of us know we give a cdt shot to our goats once a year twice when they're babies and then once a year so i was kind of concerned with my vet i talked to her and i said well we're vaccinating for clostridium so how did she get that clostridial infection that led to the E. coli getting through her bloodstream and into her brain? And we found that most commonly what happens is either one, the vaccine that we gave her, it could have been left out for too long. We do use the Barvac CDT vaccine and it gets shipped directly to us. It's on ice when we get it but maybe we left it out for too long or maybe we got a bad batch. Vaccines are not 100%. Maybe the vaccine was totally fine and we got a bad batch or the goat just didn't have a strong enough immunity to it and got the clostridial infection anyways, which damaged her intestines and led to her being able to get the E. coli poisoning in the brain. However, it's good that we know it's not something that's contagious. It's not something that we have to worry about going forward with our goats, but I do want to kind of touch on some stuff that we are going to do to prevent this in the future. So after talking about our vaccination routine with our veterinarian, we found that we're vaccinating our baby goats at three, six, and nine weeks. And our veterinarian wants us to start vaccinating. She said it's fine to do the three. Um, I really like doing the three because even though a goat's immune system's not fully kicked in when they're that young, it does give them some protection against overeating. So what we're gonna start doing now is we're gonna start doing six, nine, and 12 weeks. We're gonna do the CDT shots. It's more effective after they hit that eight week mark. And our veterinarian personally likes to see two vaccines given to the goats after they hit eight weeks. That has definitely made me feel a lot better with the whole outcome of this. It sucks. You really don't want to lose an animal. It was a really hard week there going through all that with her. It's really important over everything else to work closely 
you with your veterinarian to make sure that if you do lose an animal, you never lose an animal again from that reason. And that's the primary reason for doing a necropsy. And we have learned from this. Our vets learn stuff from this. Clemson has learned stuff from this. Every time they're presented with something different, it just advances those veterinarians' knowledge and it advances what they can tell other people they've seen. So I'm sorry for the bad video, guys. It's kind of a tough subject, but it's something that we wanted to put out there. I appreciate you watching. Go ahead and be sure to give it a thumbs up if you like it. And uh, definitely comment below if you have any questions that you'd like us to go further into or send us an email. See you guys later, hopefully on a much more upbeat video. Bye.